Hey guys, Professor Doni back here with another short video. This is coming out of One Dimensional Motion and we just finished talking about distance versus displacement. If you haven't seen that, I ask you to go back and check out the video there on YouTube on my channel. What we're going to do now is go beyond displacement and find out, okay, we go a certain distance or we displace ourselves a certain amount in a certain amount of time. Okay call that delta x. Now what happens is if I find out how long it took to do that, to displace myself, that would be with respect to time. How did I change my displacement or move per time, whether it's per seconds, things like that. Now that gets into units of meters per second or if we're in English units we could say that's miles or feet per second which we could convert to miles per hour. So what are we really talking about for this um, change in displacement per time? We could think of it as speed but since we are displaced we want to stay this becomes a vector it has a direction associated with it. We say that when we change our displacement with respect to time or over time, we refer to that as velocity. Now that typically will be average velocity. Sometimes the book will put it like this. We're just going to call it V. Okay? So, units for velocity will be meters because that's on top distance and underneath is time. So it's meters per second is our units. And we could certainly convert over to miles per hour by looking at the previous video on converting units. So that is our velocity. Um, what happens now, we, we change our velocity. We're going at 30 miles an hour or 30 meters per second and we change our velocity. Okay? If we change our velocity by speeding up, I'll draw it that way, we would say that we're accelerating. If however we slow down and we're going slower every few seconds, we slow down, go slower and slower, we would say we do the opposite, which is decelerate. Okay? Now acceleration is really how we're changing our velocity with respect to time. So we're going to say that A, acceleration is change in velocity over time. Now it's still a vector, so we technically should put an arrow on top there, but uh, we're saying we're accelerating in a certain direction at this rate. Now units for this will be meters per second per second. We can rewrite that as meters per second squared if we clean it up or combine those terms. But what is acceleration really telling us? And I think this is what's important here. It's telling us how many meters per second we are increasing or decreasing our speed per second. So, for an example, let me pick a different color here. So, for example, if our acceleration, let's try that again. Let's say our acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. That really means we're increasing by 5 meters per second every one second because that's a positive. That would mean after one second we're traveling at 5 meters per second. After another second we'd be going now at 10. After 3, 15. And so on and so on. If this was a negative, we were decelerating, we would call that negative. We would count backwards every second. We would subtract that amount. Okay? So that's talking about how if we displace with respect to time, we're going to get velocity. If we can change our velocity, speed up or slow down, we push the accelerator. So we say we're accelerating. If we slow down over that time, we push the decelerator or the brake. Now beyond that we could say what happens if I hit the nitrous okay, and change my acceleration like a downshift, the turbo kicks in. We uh, unofficially call that a jerk or a yank. That's what happens in the Fast and the Furious when they hit the nitrous and get that extra boost. They're accelerating, they hit that and they accelerate their acceleration. That's uh, beyond what we're looking at here. We're talking about normal cars and normal acceleration. So. Hope that helps you with that. We're going to be more on this one, so keep following.